Nous allons parler des éthiques environnementales. We're going to talk about environmental ethics, which means that we have with nature a relationship which is not only technical but also moral, that we have duties versus nature and the entities making up nature, and that these entities also have rights. The uh, Ethics movement developed systematically starting in the 1970s, especially in English-speaking countries, North America as a whole, United States and Canada, but also New Zealand, Australia, Great Britain. If one wants to understand what it's all about, one should go backwards to the first half of the 20th century and try and understand who was Aldo Leopold. Aldo Leopold was an American uh, man who specialized in forestry and was active during the first half of the 20th century. At the end of his life, he published a book which was then published uh, following his death in 1949. And this book was very successful and uh, it played an essential role in environmental ethics. The, bo the book's title was uh, A Sand County Almanac. And Leopold described his life in nature in his... Uh, a state uh, in uh, the Sand County, north of the United States, in the state of Wisconsin, and he describes what he saw. And at the end of the uh, book, he exposed uh, his ethics, and he said that it was uh, impossible to imagine that an ethical relationship with Earth could exist without love, respect, and admiration for Earth, and for a lot of, with a lot of consideration for its value. And by value, he means not the economic value, but the philosophical value of planet Earth and nature. He then he so raises a question, and people working in environmental ethics attempted to reply to this question in the second half of the 20th century. About value, there were two replies, two answers given. That of intrinsic value. Now, the whole idea here is to uh, pitch against each other what is instrumental and what is intrinsical. Instrumental is something that we use as an instrument which is useful for us, and the economic value of nature attempts to measure the usefulness of a given thing for us. Talking about an intrinsic value means that things do not exist for us. They have their own value, an intrinsic value, and that living beings will live mate, reproduce independently from us, and that means they have a value which uh, is worthy of respect. And this kind of ethics will encourage us to respect nature and will pitch against each other intrinsical value and uh, instrumental value. Now, the second answer was that uh, the opposition between the two types of values was a bit stiff and that we could find a value for nature without damaging Earth and destroying it, when, which we do uh, when we consume uh, land products. This second type of answer acknowledged the fact that we could show respect or admiration for nature without trying to destroy it. A scientist never tries to destroy the object of his study. We have an aesthetic admiration for nature. Nature provides us with uh, metaphysical or religious feelings, and people start talking about ecosystemic services provided by nature. And finally, nature does provide services. For instance, uh, pollinating insects or birds and bees, uh, pollinating flowers and allowing nature to keep reproducing itself. So nature does provide services, which means that we have to uh, show respect for nature, use it, but not destroy it. And something that has an intrinsic value 
means that it is not replaceable. The multiplicity of values lays the emphasis on the fact that there are many different reasons, reasons to attribute value to nature. So on the one hand, there is a notion that grants value to nature independently from man. Nature has its own value, and in this case, life is at the center of the moral consideration. This is the biocentric attitude, whereas if we consider that there is a multiplicity of values, the assumption there is that those values have uh, a word for men, and therefore this is the anthropocentric theory. And a lot has been said in the on the opposition between those who give value some worth independently from men or those who think that nature is used and therefore it becomes an object that can be destroyed. There is this opposition between biocentrism and anthropocentrism. So back to uh, Aldo Leopold. Aldo Leopold did not reply directly to the matter of uh, nature's value or worth, he said that there was a formula to guide our actions regarding nature. He said, a thing is right when it tends to preserve the integrity, stability, and beauty of the biotic community. And it is wrong when it tends otherwise. What he meant by that was that what has value are not individual entities or even humankind. The value is carried by the uh, biotic community, ecosystems, common life that man and nature can have together. According to Leopold, we are not separate from nature, we are part of nature. And this idea became all the more important when environmental questions have become a global issue, and it is the case today. We see the climatic changes affecting all of planet Earth. The whole planet is endangered. One of Leopold's uh, students, uh, John Lienberg Calicott, recently produced a, a book called Thinking Like a Planet, where he said the fight between anthropocentrism and biocentrism is outdated. Mankind is threatened by climatic changes. They are now included in the whole moral discussion. So one may easily talk about moral anthropocentrism, but according to him, Planet Earth was not designed only for man, and man is not the beginning and the end of everything. Man should take all living beings in consideration, and there are ethics for respect developed by biocentric theories which are well justified. And moving from local ethics, such as Leopold's ethics or the ethics that are being formulated uh, starting in the 1970s to global ethics, such as the ones developed nowadays, means uh, preserving the ethics for respect and adding uh, responsibility, accountability. And these two values, respect and accountability, are the two values on which environmental ethics are focusing now.